All right, guys, Fool will come to you with another video. Shout out to the whole LGBC. If you like this video, please feel free to up like the video. And if you would like to, you may also subscribe to this page and we can go from there, you know? And if you don't want to subscribe, that's fine. As I always say, always by choice, never by force. So, you know, I want to talk about something that is being brought to my attention. And I just want to say this in, in a way that doesn't offend anybody, but still doesn't leave any filters out. So, this coronavirus pandemic has created a lot of confusion. And you know, all the elders I've talked to about this whole situation have always told me that beware, beware, beware. We are about to enter into a time of confusion and deception as well. And I'm sorry to say it, but we are indeed living in those times 110% are we living in those times? Okay, when I say mass confusion, I mean mass confusion that we are living in right now. We're living in an age of misinformation. We're living in an age of famous lies and unpopular truths, okay? This is what's occurring right now with us. So with that being said, we have to look at what's going on with China and what they're doing to black people over there. And we have to look at it in a way that maybe this was set up as a collaboration, as a joint effort to furthermore marginalize us, to furthermore make us even more docile and make us and, and bring this false narrative that will furthermore impose oppression upon us. Now, it appears that in China right now as we speak that African people are being evicted from their apartments. They're being evicted from their living quarters, having to sleep outside because they are being blamed for this, the COVID-19 pandemic. They're the ones being blamed for it. Now, it's interesting because in one of the bookshops I go to, which has like natural remedies, which has like natural things for hygiene, you know, like shea butter, black soap. That's where I do my business at. Now, interesting enough, there is, there was a Chinese guy who went into the store trying to sell the owner some masks. Now, this Chinese guy says something very telling and it makes me know that he, even he's giving out misinformation. This Chinese man said that the coronavirus is gone in China. Says it's, it's finished. He said, oh, it's finished. It's done. It's not there anymore. That's, those were his words, right? But here's the thing about that. If that was the case, why is it that y'all are going so hard on Chinese people or on, on the Africans there? So it was brought to my attention that yes, Africans are getting kicked out. Africans are being beaten up. And 
the Chinese government is turning a blind eye to it. Now, here's the thing about China, okay? And I will say this. This is what I will say. During Maoist China, when Mao Zedong was, had his revolution, that's when you have progressive, forward-thinking Chinese people. That's when you had African revolutionary groups that were fighting decolonization. That's where, where they would do their training at. Some of them would be sent, some cadre would be sent to China to do the training, to, to have that revolutionary fervor and to have the necessary skills needed to decolonize their country, okay? That's a bygone era though. We, that China no longer exists. I'm pretty sure that it, with, with all the, the people in China, there's very, very few Maoists. I would probably say there's probably like less than shit. Maybe less than probably less than like 1% probably still subscribe to Maoist Mao Zedong's views. Now here's the thing. North Korea still carried that flag. You know, North Korea still has that 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 way about them because they believe in self-sufficiency production inside their own country and things of that matter right now let's look at this situation you have the fact that Maoist China, I mean, excuse me, you have the fact that right now China, who more or less, let's just say hypothetically speaking, that the coronavirus did originate in China, or this strand of the coronavirus did originate in China. Hypothetically speaking. So, here, in America, you've had a string of crimes that have been ethnically, that have ethnically targeted Chinese people or people of Asian descent and have placed the blame on them. I mean, Donald Trump even called it a Chinese virus, right? So... They got the blame for it. But now the narrative is changing to us getting the blame for it, right? So we get the blame for this whole situation. And we're suffering for that when we had nothing to do with it so now it brings upon a couple of questions are we number one are we going to fight fire with fire are we going to do the same thing in um, Africa and kick the Chinese out and tell them that we're not going to tolerate that crap? That you're not going to mistreat our citizens in these, in, in China? And that we'll do the same to you guys over there? Are we going to do that? Number two, since we see how they truly feel about us, are we going to cut off all economic ties with them I mean don't get it twisted yeah they have money I mean now now that this has hit them though I mean I'm I'm pretty sure they've lost quite a bit of money but 
let's just say they're gonna bounce back, right? Let's just put it at that. So, are we going to now figure out another plan instead of rely so heavily on the Chinese for our economic development? For infrastructure, because I'm going to tell you something: the Chinese in Africa, what they do, they really don't care about the well-being of people there. Okay, they just care about their interests being made, and it's led to different things. It's led to a lot of unfinished projects, but it's also led to things in which, which have hurt us environmentally. You know, because you have things like mercury being put into the water. You have things like the offshore drilling that they do, that furthermore pollutes the water. Although China has it is abundant in fish, they still are fishing a lot in in African waters. So now we see how they really feel about us. The real question, and let me say something else too before I continue on. What a lot of Af- what a lot of Chinese are doing too. It's a lot of Chi- believe it or not. Okay, and I have my receipts for this. What a lot of Chinese are doing now, a lot of Chinese are having illegitimate kids with African women and leaving the woman and the kid hanging up to dry and not providing for them any kind of resources, any kind of financial help. Nothing like that. Okay. Basically, wham, bam, thank you, man. Is what they're doing, right? And so, another thing that I found out that they're doing is that the Chinese are actually also responsible for human trafficking rings in Africa as well. As a matter of fact, on my turf in Cabo Verde, there was a human trafficking ring broken up. Well, unfortunately, African nationals were included in that ring, but the head honcho was a Chinese, were Chinese nationals. So, with this being said, are we going to really stand for this? Or are we going to really fight fire with fire? That's the question I have. I've already started to kind of fight fire with fire because, you know, you're not going to catch me going into any Chinese-owned business now, okay? When it comes to, like, Chinese food, Chinese restaurants, I cut that. I'm cold Turk on that, 100%. I cold Turk it. When it comes to, um, you know convenience stores or something like that I just find honestly if you're in the hood most of the time you can't really find a black owned one so what I did is you know you have to realize there's different types of Asians there's you you can be national um, listically for example you can be Thai Uh, You can be Vietnamese, and you can be also, uh, you know, Cambodian. So if, let's say I do have the taste for some ethnic food, right? I don't go to a Chinese place. I will go to a Thai place, or I will go to a Cambodian place. And I'm telling you, uh, there is distinctions in the food, okay? So I I have taken that route when I'm in the mood for ethnic food. And even when it comes to 
uh, me needing something from a convenience store or something like that, right? I'll go to the Cambodian one instead. Because at the end of the day, Cambodians aren't doing this. At the end of the day, Thais aren't doing this. At the end of the day, Vietnamese aren't doing it. It's the Chinese who are doing this. So I'll freeze them out. I'll freeze them out that way. Because it's unacceptable. You know? I'm going to tell you something, man. There are very few Chinese who... I'm just going to keep it honest, okay? Chinese rather be associated with whites than minorities any time. And the majority of Asians would rather be associated with whites, okay? For the most part. That's why you have, you know, they call it yellow fever. And you have, you'll see, I'm telling you, if you come to LA, you're going to see it a lot. You'll see a lot of Asian women with these, um, with these white boys, okay? And the, the ones, Asians that you see with the white boys are those who are mostly fairer skinned, okay? You're not going to really see a darker skinned Asian with a white boy because for the most part, that, that's too close to black for them, Right? Because I'm gonna tell you something. Just like there's colorism in the African community, there's colorism in black community too. I mean, in the Asian community too. Because when it comes down to it, if you look at a Thai, if you look at a, at a Cambodian, they're gonna be darker usually than, than your typical Asian. And so with that being said, that, that darkness is frowned upon in that community. So you, you do have white Chinese who will ridicule other Asians for being dark because they've adopted the white superior, superiority complex into their culture. And that gets played out right now in what we see them doing to Africans. And if I were African leaders, I would just kick them out the country. That's what I would do. You know, look, this is the thing. We've been through so much shit, okay? We, we have nothing to show for our natural resources, okay? Except for ethnic wars and civil wars and bad infrastructure. And those resources getting placed in other parts that are not in Africa. What else do we have to lose now? So if any African national is listening to this, then I suggest you do just that and kick them out and leave it at that. They're not doing anything for us. Okay, so we should do that. All right. And with that being said, this is Fula signing out. Let me know what you think about this and let me know what you think that should be done about it. Okay. Because it's, it's not cool that we're letting them get away with this. We can't let this shit fly. We cannot let this shit fly. Okay. We've been letting this shit fly for too long. Man, we got to grow some, man. For real. I surely do miss Gaddafi, man. Because he was one of the last real ones who stood up. But anyhow, leave your thoughts, leave your comments. Full of signing out. I'll probably do a video about boxing next. It's nothing really to report on. Job drama.